how to make a Google Slides embedded within your Canvas as an assignment so that each student will receive their own copy and they can turn it in as an assignment on Canvas. So let's say that we have a PDF that we want to turn into a worksheet that they can do digitally. We're gonna open up a new Google Slides and start from scratch. You're first gonna to wanna to change the file, um, the page size to a size of a piece of paper. So I'm gonna go over to the file page setup and I'm gonna go down to custom. And here's where I change three and a half, 11. Click apply, now it's the size of a piece of paper. I'm gonna get rid of these little text boxes that always default there, and I have a blank piece of paper. So what you wanna to do to make the PDF a worksheet, you wanna use the PDF as an image file. So um, let's open up that PDF we want to use. All right, so here's my PDF. And currently a PDF is a protected file, meaning you cannot change, type on it, or anything like that. So I need to make it full screen so that I can take a screenshot of it. I'm gonna go ahead, whoops. I have a full um, view of the worksheet that I wanna copy. And I'm going to take a screenshot. You would use a stipping tool on your computer or um, a shortcut on your Mac if you're using that. And I'm just taking a picture. So that's gonna to save to my computer. I'm gonna come over here to the Google Slides and I need to make that image the background. So I'm gonna come up to background. I'm gonna say choose image. And here I'm going to find that file, that picture file that I just took my screenshot for. automatically saves to my desktop and there's a screenshot click open click done so there it is it's on my Google Slides as the background image but this makes it kind of look like my worksheet currently there's nothing anybody can do so I have to add text boxes um, so you could click the text box and you can just drag those over on top of the blank spots wherever you want your um, kids to be writing. Another good little tip is if you um, use a table. Sometimes the tables help keep things a little bit more um, straight and the text boxes can sometimes get a little uh, messy, I guess, with the resizing. So a lot of times if I'm doing a, a, a document like this, I would probably rather use a table and I would kind of resize it over the line that I want. It's personal preference. Either one will allow the user to type in on that spot. So I'm going to go ahead and make some more. So I'm just copying and pasting to have a shortcut here. You can see the very faint gray lines over where I put the other cells so that um, the student and you can kind of see where those text boxes are. So again, I'm just kind of copying, pasting them over. You can resize them how big you want. Oops. And hopefully um, at this point your students have some familiarity or they have used Google Slides before so you know they understand how to click inside and know you know how to type inside those boxes. Perfect. So I have all the boxes exactly where I need so the students can type in their answers. So I'm going to save this. Science properties sort. All right, so now that this is ready to go, I don't have to mess with the share button. I don't even have to change the um, copy settings for the link. Um, with 
Canvas, they have the external tool option. So it makes it really easy to add a Google Slides as a assignment. So here I'm in my science course and I'm gonna go ahead under my uh, module for the week, I'm going to add an assignment. So I click the plus sign, it's defaulted to assignment and I'm gonna say a new one. I'm going to name it um, Science Properties Sort. And I like indenting so it's a little easier for them to see. Perfect. So it popped up at the bottom. I'm going to go into that assignment. Currently it's blank. Now, usually I like putting in the directions. Um, of course, I like saying, you know, what the directions are for that specific assignment. So I'm going to write about those, but I also like telling my students um, you know, how to correctly use the Google Slides. So for example, in Canvas, um, the Google Slide will show up kind of small in their assignment box. So I usually like to type in the directions and tell them to click on the blue link of the file name and that will open up a new tab. Um, so it's a little bit bigger. And I'll also remind them in the directions box here to make sure they click the submit button when they finish their Google slide assignment. That way I will see it. Otherwise, if they do not click that submit button, then I do not see their work that they did. So um, for the sake of time, I'm going to skip over the directions really quick. And let's pretend I have all the directions done. I'm going to go down to the assignment settings. This is where you can change the point value. I usually keep the group as assignments and however you want the display grade to go. Um, so this right here is the most important part. If you're trying to use a Google slide or a Google doc where students are putting in their own responses and you want them to have their own copy, you need to come to submission type and you have to click on external tool. Then you're going to click on find. And these are all the external tools you can use in Canvas. This is also where you would go if you want to embed a Nearpod lesson as an assignment. I'm going to click on Google Docs. And then I am going to find that file that I just made. So everything is automatically connected and linked to your Google account. So it's super easy. So I'm gonna go inside and find that file. What did I name it again? Science property sort. So I can even search for it. Science properties sort. There it is. So once I um, select it, you wanna click submit. Click select again, and it put the URL there. So, um, Everything is automatically there. Now you could click this and load the tool in the new tab. Basically, if a student goes to take the assignment, it would automatically open up in a new tab on their browser. I usually keep that unchecked. Um, again, personal preference, it just works better so that they can see the directions at the top. So I'm gonna leave that unchecked. And I usually like unlimited attempts. Um, maybe they made a mistake when they did it and clicked submit. Um, for right now in the beginning, I definitely like unlimited. Um, maybe if it was something in the future and, you know, they only were allowed, it was kind of more geared towards like a, an assessment, you would want to change that one. But I'm going to click unlimited. And um, you would come down here and put, you always want to make sure you put your due dates in Canvas so they show up on your student's calendar. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click save. Now again, I did not put the directions in just for the sake of time for this recording, but you really, really wanna make sure that you have um, some help for the students so they, they know what to click, especially to make sure that they click on the submit button when they finish. So this is like a little preview. You can kind of see the assignment, Google Slides is super, super tiny. There's no way they could work in this. So you wanna explain to your students whether it's in directions or, or you know, face-to-face -face personal um, voice, you wanna make sure that they understand to click on this blue link 
so that it will open as a large file in a new tab. So you can see this is what it will look like when the student clicks on that link. The best part is it will automatically make the copy for them. It also automatically saves it to their cloud. So they do not have to mess with file, save as. They also do not have to mess with this button, the share button. Um, everything is all done through the cloud and through Canvas. So they don't have to be messing with saving and they do not have to mess with the share files or sending it to you that way. So let's pretend I'm the student and I would come in. I would type all my answers. And again, everything is automatically saved because it's a live document, okay? So let's pretend I finished all of this. The student would then come back over to this tab and they would see a blue submit button here, okay? I don't see it because I'm the teacher and I have the teacher account, but the student would automatically see that blue submit button. So you need to explain again when they finish, that is really important that they go back and they click the blue submit button. And once they do, you will be able to see it inside of your, your grades. Um, it will show automatically basically all of their work that they did. So whatever they typed, you will see there. Now it won't be live. For instance, if I was um, working with my students on a live call and I had them all working on the same document, um, they, you would not be able to see all of them live at the same time because they have to click the submit button back on this page. Then you would see what they submitted. You would see it through your grades. So when you go in and you're coming over to, to grade your work for the school day and you click on whatever you see that is to do, then um, you would see whatever they put on their Google Doc. Um, literally, it will show the exact same thing that they showed. So um, this is a really, really helpful way, especially if you're looking for um, ways to, you know, turn certain worksheets or different activities that you might have had that you still want to use. This is a way to do it. And it's also another way to kind of get outside of the standard Canvas assignments and standard Canvas quizzes and things like that. The Google Slides, you know, you can just do a lot more. Um, you can even do activities where the students are using the drawing tools and the shapes, um, you know, just a lot of different things. It, it just gives you more opportunity to teach with them. So that's it. Hopefully this was helpful and you are good to go.